Well, hello there. My name is James B. and I do a podcast. Actually, it's a podcast. It's a visual podcast every Friday. And I'm glad you could join me. And I'm kind of acting serious right now because um, I bought this hat. And I don't know why. I mean, I know Halloween's coming up, but I don't really do cowboys for Halloween. I, I, I just like this hat. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to do a country accent for you for the entire uh, podcast here. I am going to tell you, though, that my special guest this time is Don Dixon, world-renowned photographer, working on a project called Canadian Icons, living in San Francisco right now, originally from Toronto. He was instrumental in the Archuline Scholarship Fund, uh, Don Frank's uh, Appreciation Society. Uh, his best pals are people he's taken photos with. He makes friends with everybody. Ry Cooter, Christopher Plummer, Margaret Atwood, Jane Eastwood, Moses Neimer, you name it. He's friends with everybody. So we're going to talk to him in a few minutes. Um, if you would like to see my old podcast or be in touch with me, jamesb.ca, that's where you want to find me. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me uh, who I should interview. Tell me what you like about this or what you don't like about this. You know what? If you don't like this, maybe you should send me a note and tell me what I should be doing to improve it so you would feel compelled to give money to Patreon and help me improve this. How about that? Because, you know, we can all help each other here. Anyway, let's get to the clubs. Hughes Room Live. If you like country, if you like folk, if you like singer-songwriter music, this week is jammed. First of all, I'm so excited. Tom Rush is coming to town. He's older, but sounding better than ever. Love that guy's sense of humor. Love his music. Steve Goldberger uh, only does a few shows once in a while. He's over there. Dar Williams and Claire Lynch, who plays bluegrass, and I love bluegrass. So, HughesRoomLive.com for all the action this week. Lula.ca, just around the corner has Havana Club Friday. It's a Benny Mori tribute, followed by Cafe Cubano. And on Saturday, they have Salsa Saturday. And it's kind of one of their favorite guys, Ricky Franco and the P-Crew Orchestra. They play every couple of months, and they are a favorite. Bring your dancing shoes. It's a good time over there at Lula. Um, they've also got a Canlit Gala, a book launch. And uh, Thursday, the Toronto Witches Ball. Not sure what that's all about, uh, but if you are a witch or you like witches, you really want to be there. You want to be there anyway. It's Lula Lounge, for God's sake. Um, Old Mill Toronto, the Homesmith Bar, they always have great music. Thank you to Faye Olson for booking amazing music for so many years. Sometimes uh, those people that do all the work and the behind the scenes, they don't, they're unsung heroes. So, Faye Olson! There, I just sang it. Steve D'Angelo is there tonight. He is a guitar hero. I treasure uh, the record I have from Steve D'Angelo. It's a vinyl LP that he made a couple years back. Great jazz guitar player. Plays all styles of music. Um, and then, uh, coming up tomorrow, Brian Blaine, who's going to bring blues to the Old Mill Homesmith Bar. And then, uh, later this week, uh, Russ Little is there on Wednesday. Great trombone player, great friend of mine. Love that man. I wish I saw him more often. And, uh, and then on Thursday, Bob DeAngelis, an amazing clarinet player from Carnegie Hall to Old Mill, Toronto. This guy never stops working. All right, so all of that. Homesmith Bar, 7.30 to 10.30. No cover, $20 minimum. Parking across the street, but it's also a minute walk from Old Mill Subway. Jazz Bistro, uh, an absolutely amazing flute player and uh, tenor sax player. Lou Tobacken is up from the U.S. If you know jazz, you already know him. If you don't know jazz, this guy, do you like Jethro Tull? This guy plays a wicked flute. And it's so cool because he has Bernie Sinensky backing him up. And Bernie Sinensky, of course, uh, he played with Mo Kaufman for years. He plays with Bill McBurney right now. Bernie Sinensky knows how to handle one of the world's greatest flute players. And uh, that's going to be an incredible show. Bernie Sinensky Trio and the great Lou Tobacken. I bought a record called Wacky Tobacken uh, in the 70s, but I think it might have been a bootleg um, because I've never found it again. But anyway, he's got lots of great records. Out. You can find a bunch of stuff on YouTube, so surf around and look at them, and then please go buy some music. Pay for some music. What a novel idea. Um, also, lots of other stuff in the next few days over at Jazz Bistro. But next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, giving you a heads up, Mark Eisenman with uh, Mike Murley. It's a quartet featuring Mark Eisenman on piano and Mike Murley on sax. you got to love the Jazz Bistro. Okay, 
A uh, quick thank you to Barbarians. I keep promising to interview Aaron Barbarian. He has been interviewed so much in the last little while. I think he needs a break, but I'll get to him in the next week or two. An amazing restaurateur. So many stories. He's also a philanthropist. Can't wait to talk to him. But you know what? Be light at 7 Elm Street and treat yourself to an incredible meal. Lunch or dinner. If, you, if you're going for dinner, make reservations. You'll never get in. Uh, lunch, you can pretty much just walk in and have a nice little lunch. Um, BarbaraFinancial.com. Captain Paul helped me a year year ago I had some hard times uh, financial times I should say and he gave me some great advice and I bounced back so thank you Captain Paul and part of the reason I bounced back is because of people at Patreon thank you to everyone who donates at Patreon some of you might have even forgot you did that but you signed up to give me five or ten bucks a month and it's still coming in and it's so helpful I'm an independent artist trying to promote other people so it means so much to have support from others so you can always do that at patreon now it's time for Don Dixon I love this man here we go the great Don Dixon interview Ta -da, hello hey hey Don Dixon how are you I'm good thanks how you so doing? you were li living in San Francisco I've already told people at the intro that you are a renowned photographer tell me what your life is like these days in San Francisco well um, you know I was working on the uh, the icon project for years before I left Canadian icons project That's yep. right. so when I got to San Francisco I you know I was looking for something to do and I love music as you know I'm a big fan so I went to SF Jazz and um, I started volunteering there. And here we are like two and a half years later, I've shot over 80 artists and I'm doing kind of the same thing as I was doing with the Canadian Icon Project, but now I'm doing it with uh, jazz musicians. Right. Now you shot most of Jazz FM's uh, biggest shows, the Jazz Live series. Yep. Uh, and so you already had a love of jazz and a love of shooting live concert footage. And a lot of experience, so that was a real plus. Going in as a pro, um, they realized right away that I knew what I was doing. And most of the people that were shooting for uh, SF Jazz are amateurs. Right, know? they're hobbyists. Yeah. They have nice gear and they love what they do, but... Yeah, they're right. not yeah. getting the crucial stuff. So, um, you know, after they got to trust me, then I would get to go backstage and I'd uh, meet people like Ry Cooter and hang out with him. And, uh, you know, that's so much fun. I mean, I, I love being able to sit down and have these kind of conversations because, as you know, with the, the Icon Project, I always would sit down with a couple of cameras and do what we're doing right now, you know, ask questions yeah. and, and find out about these people. You know, what's their past like? What are they like? Uh, you know, who have you played with? And um, so for me, it's really exciting because all of the jazz greats go through San Francisco. It's just, you know, it's a corridor for music. And the live music on the street, well, you've come out, James. Right. You know what it's like. The live music around town is fantastic. And you're, uh, you're thinking in San Francisco, uh, can you describe SF Jazz to people who haven't seen that huge building? Okay, well, SF Jazz is the only standalone stand jazz uh, concert hall in North America that is dedicated solely to jazz music. And they have over 500 shows a year. And I mean, these are serious shows. There's two theaters. Uh, there's Minor Auditorium, which can handle, I think, around 700 people at its max. And then there's the Joe Henderson Lab, which is much smaller. It's like my studio, you know, the, where we did Live at Asylum. Downstairs, very intimate and small. And then they get a lot of local groups and up-and-comers coming through. And they're not even just up-and-comers. You know, like I've seen Jason Marcellus there with, you know, 90 people in the room. So it's a, it's a really interesting place to be. And a restaurant and yep, there's a, a little bit of everything, right? Right there. So my, I usually go in early, go to the restaurant, eat dinner, have a couple of drinks, and then I head into the theater. And, you know, I've done that over 80 times since I got there. So, you know, <laughs> so Ry Cooter's a highlight. Who's a, who are a couple others that you think you nailed a good shot or you, or you had a, a good moment with? I think Van Morrison. You know, for me, that was, I've been listening to Van since I could walk. Yeah. You know, and there he was, he walked out on stage, very shy guy, but uh, man, he just nailed it. I didn't know that he was such a good sax player as well as guitar player. He was just throwing down instruments, picking up other ones, and he was playing with Joey DeFrancesco. You know, and Joey is such an effervescent guy. He was having so much fun, and the cool thing was that Joey did not try an upstage or anything. He was with one of his heroes, and he was definitely a sideman. I mean, they... 
deferred to him. Joey picked up a, a, a trumpet. Yep. And he walked out and he played this trumpet like a god. And then um, Van said, oh my god. You know, he goes, he only picked this up like a, two years ago and listened to him play. <laughs> so it was a fantastic show. And um, there, there's a lot of talent on the street. That, the difference between, um, I think, Toronto and San Francisco is the, uh, there's more people in San Francisco proper. But the, uh, the enthusiasm for live music and performance is so much stronger there. There's a real bass crowd that are out for everything. And, um, and there's a group there that I introduced you to some of them when you were down, the Jazz Mafia. And this is a core group, kind of like the people that you have here in Toronto. We've kind of got our own jazz mafia in Toronto. It's a core group of about 30 musicians. And they come together in different configurations depending on the, the venue. So I've seen them one night where they've been a, a funk band and a really heavy-duty funk band. Actually, Stevie Wonder climbed up on stage with them. And he played just, he just happened to be in the area and came in. And then the next day, they were doing hip-hop in another place. And they were really nailing it. So these are really great musicians, and, and the core group, just like here in Toronto, support each other. You know, they go to each other's shows, so it's the same. You know, jazz musicians are the same everywhere. That's what's cool about jazz. Right. They like to actually hang out together and work together and support each other. And It's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it's a lifestyle, and yeah, they love each other's music, too. It's not competitive. Not like photography. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, I want to go back. I'm glad your things are working out in San Francisco. Beautiful place. Um, going back to when you were in Toronto, um, you were shooting for Jazz FM, and then you decided to go from the Icons project, and while you're doing that, you were also doing uh, your Live in Asylum Can you explain that to people who don't know what that means? Well, Live in Asylum was something that... You mean Gord came up with, Gord Smith. Uh, Gord, Gord is, as you know, uh, Gord was a special effects artist in Hollywood for his whole career. Um, he developed this makeup uh, program that changed, revolutionized um, latex makeup, and I don't know the details. So I'm not I do, I read his book. It's unbelievable how important that guy was. <laughs> so anyway, he's an icon. So he came in one day and I photographed him and I took him downstairs, because as you know, I, I'm a garage band enthusiast. I had this set up in the basement. He, he said, hey, do you want to borrow a Bose PA system? I said, yeah, sure. The next week, he had five of them in the basement. And then you came by and you said, what's going on here? And we realized that we had an opportunity to do some really great recording. Because I had in-house recording. We had 24-track recording in there. Um, and, and then we, uh, we got cameras. We had five cameras. We did, uh, so we had surround sound and five cameras. And how many, how many shows did we do? We did about six shows, but we had, on one day, we had a dozen musicians come through. We made a dozen uh, music videos in one day. And that's what we, you know... That was my birthday. Was that yeah. your birthday? Yeah. Looking back now, you, you know, um, at the time we were having, it was fun. We were having a great time and we were doing some, uh, you know, creating some, some great memories. But, but I look back now and you see, like, Don Franks. And we have these intimate concerts with Don Franks which it still brings a tear to my eye every time I, I watch one of those. And then um, Archie Aline, right. you know, with the Archie Aline Scholarship Fund. Remember, he was, he was launching young musicians' careers, and that became a home base for Archie. So and I, you even got the two of them talking together, I which has not been seen yet. That's right. I had them sit down, and we talked for about an hour and a half, and they reminisced about the old days uh, in Toronto as they were coming up and you know working at the CBC and then they would they would um, you know bring back memories for each other and it was so great to see the two of them together because they were right there they were in the zone I only spoke when things would well they never did settle down actually <laughs> <laughs> right it's just two guys talking just forever two guys talking yeah so I gotta cut that too so there's lots to do and you know I'd really love to do a live at Asylum out in San Francisco and I've been talking to them at at um, SF Jazz to see if we can take the uh, Joe Henderson lab and do what we were doing together. Um, and I, I, I'm getting them, you know, it, it took a while. A Canadian walks in and just kind of takes over. Uh, I'm trying not to step on any toes. But I think, you know, this year, James, we'll, we'll be doing it down there too. What I'd love to do is bring some of our fantastic talent down to San Francisco because I know uh, Jazz Mafia probably just, you know, adopt them. 
Right. Like you say, if somebody's really good, people like each other. They don't get threatened. They get excited. They do. Yeah. 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 That's the. I think that is unique to jazz. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Yeah. You know? uh, rock and roll. You know, I've shot a lot of that too, and it's uh, there's just too much money there. You know, that's like right. when people get success in rock and roll, they're they're isolated. Actually, you know, they're. Yeah, the more success people get in jazz, the more they seem to connect with each other. In other vocations, I don't know about classical. I think classical might be similar to jazz. Mm -hmm. But in other venues, I mean, it, it separates them from everybody else. It's competitive. They, yeah, and nowadays, I guess people have to sign autographs and meet their fans. Unless they're super huge, they they really, as they're going up, they, they kind of have to. Whereas jazz people were always accessible. Yeah, well, you know, you're usually taking the bus home with the same guy you were listening to in the club, right? <laughs> so, uh, the Icons Project, can you uh, explain what that is? Because it continues. You're, you're, you're collecting famous Canadians taking their photos. That's right. Um, when I left Toronto, I shot, I think, 127 <clears throat> interviews and photographs of famous Canadians. And it wasn't just musicians or actors, which is my circle. Um, it was doctors, scientists, uh, philanthropists, humanitarians. So now that I'm down in, uh, in LA, or not, not in LA, I'm saying LA because I went there to shoot Robbie Robertson uh, about a month ago, I got a call from his manager and he goes, um, you know, we're doing a documentary film and we need a picture to promote the film and a magazine cover of, of Robbie. And, and I, I love that icon uh, style that you have. Could you come down and, and shoot it? So, um, so I went down. Uh, I threw everything in a truck, drove down there. And, and so you hadn't seen Robbie in several years? No, right. no, not at all. And he was playing in a place called The Village. This is a recording studio. So I pulled up, and I, it just looks like a regular cinder block building on the outside. And I walked inside, and it looked like they took the inside of a Medici castle and skinned it and then brought it over and, and put it inside this recording studio. It was phenomenal. They had a big stairway. It was probably about 15 feet wide, you know, with uh, red carpet going up and all gilded and carved. But the great thing was, I looked up on the wall and there's a gold record and it's goat's head soup. And then <clears throat> uh, yellow brick road on the other side. And just on and on and on. And it was all, all, all of these famous, Jimi Hendrix had played there. And uh, I'm thinking, I think, wow, I'm shooting in this. It's like a museum, you know, it's the, right. it's the temple of music. And so I went in and I set up, and um, the recording studio was amazing. You know, the, the room was about 2,000 square feet, and it was about three stories high. Velvet curtains from the top to the bottom. So I set up in there, and I, I was shooting, uh, you know, um, setting up my lighting. And um, Robbie wasn't in yet. I was shooting his, his, um, his manager. And then Robbie came walking in after and he was standing behind me. I turned, so I just kept shooting because I wanted to get the lighting right. I turned around and I said, oh, I guess you're here to see Jared's uh, photo session. <laughs> he goes, what? <laughs> so, you know, it kind of broke the ice. And he was friendly right from the get-go. He said, uh, his, uh, Jared said, you're only at 15 minutes. He's busy. We're recording. He's going back in the studio. But, um, you know, about 10 minutes in, Robbie goes, hey, we'll, we'll stay as long as we need to stay here. So about 45 minutes later, I said, okay, we're done. He goes, what? I said, yeah, get out of here. I got what I need. <laughs> he goes, oh, I love this guy. <laughs> so, and yeah. also, how about Ry Cooter? I love that story. Oh, Ry Cooter, yeah. <clears throat> well, his manager said, well, I was backstage, and his manager, several people came up to me and said, watch out. Ry doesn't like to be photographed, and, you know, he'll, uh, he'll bite you if you get too close to him. So I could see, he was sitting in his dressing room, the door was open, he had his guitar, and he was just sitting there playing, and I, I, uh, I thought, you know, I better, you know, let him know I'm here. So I knocked on the door, he goes, yeah, what do you want? And I said, uh, excuse me, Mr. Cooter, um, but I'm the photographer here, and your, your musical director, John, asked me if I would take uh, candid pictures of you, you know, um, during the rehearsal. And he, he looked at me for a little while, and I said, I love Bob Till You Drop. It was my favorite album. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I've never done that before. It was. I played the yeah. grooves off that album. And Me too. Me too. It was very funny. Me. So he goes, oh, well, if John said he wants the pictures, I guess it'll be okay. <laughs> so, you know, I could, then I got in and I could just hang around with him. And um, it was a great, oh, 
to see that guy play guitar, because I've been listening to him for years, and he, and he trained so many people, right? Well, Keith, Keith Richards. Richards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he says, well, I taught me guitar. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So to watch him just noodle away, you know, in his dressing room, I, it's not even like, it's like he's channeling music or something. It's uh, unbelievable. Uh, oh. And he was playing with Roseanne Cash. And Roseanne is such a sweetheart, you know, she's just the opposite. She's a little shy. She came out, she looked at me, she went, oh, what are you doing here? I go, ah, I'm not going to take bad pictures of you, you know. <laughs> I'll let you vet everything. So it went really well. Oh, here's something. I wanted to get back to the icons, but um, I want to ask you about editing your own photos. I think I find that probably the, the hardest thing for a lot of photographers to do is get the photos down to a few select good ones. You always only give good photos to people. Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, you give somebody a bad picture, they're going to use it. And, you know, that's not good for anybody. It's not good for them and it's not good for me either. So I usually, um, I take a lot of time in post-production. And I never did that before because, you know, when I was here, I had a staff. And I never did uh, any of the post-production work. But it was really humbling to move out there because it was just me. And I'm like, got a computer. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. But I spent the year. It took me about a year to get proficient. Right. Because um, Asylum, myself. again, back, back to Asylum in Toronto, you had a huge building and you had at least four full-time people yeah, working the, the with height, you. I had 11 in there. <clears throat> and we had, you know, Photoshop, uh, After Effects, editing, full-time producer, assistants. So it, it was a big operation. And at the time, it was, I was doing commercial work. So I had to take everything that came my way to keep the doors open and feed everybody. But now... All I do is what I want to do. I'm not doing any commercial work. I'm just shooting the, the stuff I like. Portraits yeah. of jazz artists and, and great people. So what I want to do now, I live in the United States, it's more than just Canadian icons. It's just icons. I'm just shooting icons, you know, so they don't have to just be Canadian, although I prefer Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you still have a lot of contacts, obviously, in Hollywood. I've got a ton of people in Hollywood to shoot. I, I just talked to Martin Short last night and... And I said, Marty, I've been trying to shoot you forever. He goes, I know, I know. I keep saying I'm going to come in, but I can't. I don't live up here. And I said, I live in San Francisco. I'll come to you. And he goes, oh, come on down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the next couple of weeks, I'll head down and, and photograph Marty. So will you be, what brings you to Toronto? Will you be coming up occasionally? Like, uh, because you've been up several times for someone who lives in San Francisco yeah, I need my fix. You know, I got so many great friends here. And you, I always, I mean, you've come to see me a couple of times down there already, and it hasn't been that long. So, yeah, yeah I, I have a really strong tie here. There's so many great friends. And it's a great city. I love this city. Let's say, you know, I told you earlier, when I get off the plane, I kind of go, ah, it just feels so nice to be in this town, in, in the warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I probably won't see you over Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with your uh, photography in San Francisco, and I will see you down there. And you know, you always got a room at my place, James. All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right, Don Dixon. Thank you very much for that. Hey, next Friday, more fun on the James B. Podcast. Join us every Friday. And don't forget jamesb.ca, send me a note, tell me who you think I should interview, uh, tell me how to improve the show, or ask me anything you like. All right, see you soon. Bye.